Channel Islands, the Channel Islands, Norman, Isles de la Manche, French, Isles Anglo-Normand or Isles de la Manche, are an archipelago in the English Channel, off the French coast of Normandy. They include two crown dependencies, the Bailiwick of Jersey, which is the largest of the islands, and the Bailiwick of Guernsey, consisting of Guernsey, Alderney, Sark and some smaller islands. They are considered the remnants of the Duchy of Normandy and, although they are not part of the United Kingdom, the UK is responsible for the defence and international relations of the islands. The Crown Dependencies are not members of the Commonwealth of Nations or of the European Union. They have a total population of about, and the Bailiwick's capitals, St. Helier and St. Peter Port, have populations of 33,500 and 16,488, respectively. The total area of the islands is 198 kilometers. The two bailiwicks have been administered separately since the late 13th century. Each has its own independent laws, elections, and representative bodies although in modern times, politicians from the island's legislatures are in regular contact. Any institution common to both is the exception rather than feral. The bailiwick of Guernsey is divided into three jurisdictions, Guernsey, Alderney and Sark, each with its own legislature. The term Channel Islands began to be used around 1830, possibly first by the Royal Navy as a collective name for the islands. The two major islands are Jersey and Guernsey. They make up 99% of the population and 92% of the area. The permanently inhabited islands of the Channel Islands and their population and area are. There are also several uninhabited islets. Four are part of the Bailiwick of Jersey. These lie off Alderney. These lie off Guernsey. See also list of islands of the Bailiwick of Guernsey. In general the larger islands have the A suffix, and the smaller ones have the Ho suffix, these are believed to be from the Old Norse and Holmer, respectively which means island and islet. The Shosey Islands south of Jersey are not generally included in the geographical definition of the Channel Islands but are occasionally described in English as French Channel Islands in view of their French jurisdiction. They were historically linked to the Duchy of Normandy but they are part of the French territory along with continental Normandy, and not part of the British Isles or of the Channel Islands in a political sense. They are an incorporated part of the Commune of Granville, Monge. While they are popular with visitors from France, Channel Islanders rarely visit them as there are no direct transport links from the other islands. In official Jersey French, the islands are called Isles de la Monge, while in France, the term Isles Anglo-Normand, Anglo-Norman Isles, is used to refer to British Channel Islands in contrast to other islands in the Channel. Chosy is referred to as an Ile Normand, as opposed to Anglo Normand. Isles Normand and Archipel Normand have also, historically, been used in Channel Island French to refer to the islands as a whole. The very large tidal variation provides an environmentally rich intertidal zone around the islands, and some islands such as Peru, the Ecri House, and the Ming Queers have been designated Ramsar sites. The waters around the islands include the following. The highest point in the islands is Le Plate in St. Jersey at 143 meters, 469 feet, above sea level. The lowest point is the Atlantic Ocean, sea level. The earliest evidence of human occupation of the Channel Islands has been dated to 250,000 years ago when they were attached to the landmass of continental Europe. The islands became detached by rising sea levels in the Neolithic period. The numerous dolmens and other archaeological sites extant and recorded in history demonstrate the existence of a population large enough and organized enough to undertake constructions of considerable size and sophistication, such as the burial mound at La Haugby in Jersey or the statue menors of Guernsey. Hordes of Armorican coins have been excavated, providing evidence of trade and contact in the Iron Age period. Evidence for Roman settlement is sparse, although evidently the islands were visited by Roman officials and traders. The Roman name for the Channel Islands was Ilenuri, Lenur Islands, and is included in the Pewdinger table the traditional Latin names used for the islands, Caesarea for Jersey, Sarnia for Guernsey, Reduna for Alderney, derive, possibly mistakenly, from the Antonine itinerary. Gallo-Roman culture was adopted to an unknown extent in the islands. In the 6th century, Christian missionaries visited the islands. Samson of Dole, Hellier, Markov and Magloire are among saints associated with the islands. In the 6th century, they were already included in the Diocese of Cotons where they remained until Reformation. The islands were inhabited by Britons, the people who also inhabited Wales, West Country, and nearby Brittany, 
having emigrated from Britain in the face of invading Anglo-Saxons. From the beginning of the 9th century, Norse raiders appeared on the coasts. Norse settlements succeeded initial attacks, and it is from this period that many place names of Norse origin appear, including the modern names of the islands. In 933, the islands were granted to William I. Longsword by Raoul King of Western Francia and annexed to the Duchy of Normandy. In 1066, William II of Normandy invaded and conquered England, becoming William I of England, also known as William the Conqueror. In the period 1204 to 1214, King John lost the Angevin lands in northern France, including mainland Normandy, to King Philip II of France, but managed to retain control of the Channel Islands. In 1259, his successor, Henry III of England, by the Treaty of Paris, officially surrendered his claim and title to the Duchy of Normandy, while the King of France gave up claim to the Channel Islands, which was based upon his position as feudal overlord of the Duke of Normandy. Since then, the Channel Islands have been governed as possessions of the Crown and were never absorbed into the Kingdom of England and his successor kingdoms of Great Britain and the United Kingdom. The islands were invaded by the French in 1338, who held some territory until 1345. Edward III of England granted a charter in July 1341 to Jersey, Guernsey, Sark, and Alderney, confirming their customs and laws to secure allegiance to the English crown. Owen Logok, a mercenary leader of a free company in the service of the French crown, attacked Jersey and Guernsey in 1372, and in 1373 Bertrand de Baclan besieged Montana or Gouy. The young King Richard II of England reconfirmed in 1378 the charter rights granted by his grandfather followed in 1394 with a second charter granting, because of great loyalty shown to the crown, exemption forever, from English tolls, customs and duties. Jersey was occupied by the French in 1461 as part of an exchange of helping the Lancastrians fight against the Yorkists during the War of the Roses. It was retaken by the Yorkists in 1468. In 1483 a papal bull decreed that the islands would be neutral during time of war. This privilege of neutrality enabled islanders to trade with both France and England and was respected until 1689 when it was abolished by order in council following the glorious revolution in Great Britain. Various attempts to transfer the islands from the Diocese of Coutances, Tenance, 1400, Salisbury, 1496, and Winchester, 1499 had little effect until an order in Council of 1569 brought the islands formally into the Diocese of Winchester. Control by the Bishop of Winchester was ineffectual as the islands had turned overwhelmingly Calvinist and the episcopacy was not restored until 1620 in Jersey and 1663 in Guernsey. Sark in the 16th century was uninhabited until colonized from Jersey in the 1560s. The grant of seigneurship from Elizabeth I of England in 1565 forms the basis of Sark's constitution today. During the Wars of the Three Kingdoms, Jersey held out strongly for the royalist cause, providing refuge for Charles, Prince of Wales in 1646 and 1649-1650, while the more strongly Presbyterian Guernsey more generally favored the parliamentary cause, although Castle Cornet was held by royalists and did not surrender until October 1651. The islands acquired commercial and political interests in the North American colonies. Islanders became involved with the Newfoundland fisheries in the 17th century. In recognition for all the help given to him during his exile in Jersey in the 1640s, Charles II gave George Carteret, bailiff and governor, a large grant of land in the American colonies, which he promptly named New Jersey, now part of the United States of America. Sir Edmund Andros of Guernsey was an early colonial governor in North America and head of the short-lived Dominion of New England. In the late 18th century, the islands were dubbed the French Isles. Wealthy French émigrés fleeing the revolution sought residency in the islands. Many of the town domiciles existing today were built in that time. In St. Peter Port, a large part of the harbour had been built by 1865. The islands were the only British territory to be occupied by the German army during World War II. The British government demilitarized the islands in June 1940, and the lieutenant governors were withdrawn on 21 June, leaving the insular administration to continue government as best they could under impending military occupation. Before German troops landed, between 30 June and July 4, 1940, evacuation took place. Many young men had already left to join the Allied armed forces, as volunteers. 
6,600 out of 50,000 left Jersey while 17,000 out of 42,000 left Guernsey. Thousands of children were evacuated with their schools to England and Scotland. The population of Sark largely remained where they were, but in Alderney, the entire population, save for six persons, left. In Alderney, the occupying Germans built four camps in which over 700 people out of the total worker population of about 6,000 died. Due to the destruction of documents, it is impossible to state how many forced workers died in the other islands. Alderney had the only Nazi concentration camps on British soil. The Royal Navy blockaded the islands from time to time, particularly following the invasion of Normandy in June 1944. There was considerable hunger and privation during the five years of German occupation, particularly in the final months when the population was close to starvation. Intense negotiations resulted in some humanitarian aid being sent via the Red Cross leading to the arrival of Red Cross parcels in the supply ships Vega in December 1944. The German occupation of 1940-45 was harsh, over 2,000 islanders were deported by the Germans, some Jews were sent to concentration camps, partisan resistance and retribution, accusations of collaboration, and slave labor also occurred. Many Spaniards, initially refugees from the Spanish Civil War, were brought to the islands to build fortifications. Later, Russians and Central Europeans continued the work. Many landmines were laid, with 65,718 landmines laid in Jersey alone. There was no resistance movement in the Channel Islands on the scale of that in mainland France. This has been ascribed to a range of factors including the physical separation of the islands, the density of troops, up to one German for every two islanders, the small size of the islands precluding any hiding places for resistance groups and the absence of the Gestapo from the occupying forces. Moreover, much of the population of military age had joined the British army already. The end of the occupation came after Vade on May 8, 1945, Jersey and Guernsey being liberated on 9 May. The German garrison in Alderney was left until 16 May, and it was one of the last of the Nazi German remnants to surrender. The first evacuees returned on the first sailing from Great Britain on 23 June. But the people of Alderney were unable to start returning until December 1945. Many of the evacuees who returned home had difficulty reconnecting with their families after five years of separation. Following the liberation of 1945, reconstruction led to a transformation of the economies of the islands, attracting immigration and developing tourism. The legislatures were reformed and non-party governments embarked on social programs, aided by the incomes from offshore finance which grew rapidly from the 1960s. The islands decided not to join the European Economic Community when the UK joined, and remain outside. Since the 1990s declining profitability of agriculture and tourism has challenged the governments of the islands. The Channel Islands fall into two separate self-governing bailiwicks, the Bailiwick of Guernsey and the Bailiwick of Jersey. Both are British Crown dependencies, and neither is part of the United Kingdom. They have been part of the Duchy of Normandy since the 10th century, and Queen Elizabeth II is often referred to by her traditional and conventional title of Duke of Normandy. However, pursuant to the Treaty of Paris, 1259, she governs in her right as the Queen, the Crown and Right of Jersey, and the Crown and Right of the Republic of the Bailiwick of Guernsey, and not as the Duke. This notwithstanding, it is a matter of local pride for monarchists to treat the situation otherwise. The loyal toast at formal dinners is to the Queen, our Duke, rather than to Her Majesty, the Queen is in the UK. A bailiwick is a territory administered by a bailiff. Although the words derive from a common root, bail equals to give charge of, there is a vast difference between the meaning of the word bailiff, English, and bailiff, c. The former is a court-appointed private debt collector authorized to collect judgment debts, while the latter is the most important citizen within his bailiwick. The bailiff in each bailiwick is the civil head, presiding officer of the states, and also head of the judiciary. In the early part of the 21st century, the existence of governmental offices such as the bailiffs which incorporate multiple roles straddling the different branches of government came under increased scrutiny for their apparent contravention of the doctrine of separation of powers, most notably in the Guernsey case of McDonald the United Kingdom, 2000, 30 EHRR 289 which following final judgment at the European Court of Human Rights became part of the impetus for much recent constitutional change, particularly the Constitutional Reform Act 2005, 2005 circa 4, in the UK itself, 
including the separation of the roles of the Lord Chancellor, the abolition of the House of Lords judicial role, and its replacement by the UK Supreme Court. The island's bailiffs, however, still retain their historic roles. The systems of government in the island state from Norman times, which accounts for the names of the legislatures, the states, derived from the Norman atots or estates, i.e. the crown, the church, and the people. The states have evolved over the centuries into democratic parliaments. The UK Parliament has power to legislate for the islands, but acts of parliament do not extend to the islands automatically. Usually, the act gives power to extend the application of the act to the islands by an order in council. After consultation. For the most part, the islands legislate for themselves. Each island has its own primary legislature, known as the states of Guernsey and the states of Jersey, with chief pleas in Sark and the states of Alderney. The Channel Islands are not represented in the UK Parliament. Laws passed by the states are given royal assent by the Queen and Council, to whom the islands' governments are responsible. The islands are not part of the European Union and, thus, were not a party to the 2016 referendum on the EU membership, but are part of the customs territory of the European Community by virtue of Protocol 3 to the Treaty on European Union. In September 2010, a Channel Islands Brussels office was set up jointly by the two bailiwicks to develop the Channel Islands' influence with the EU, to advise the Channel Islands' governments on European matters, and to promote economic links with the EU. Both bailiwicks are members of the British Irish Council, and Jerez and Guernseys are recognized regional languages of the Isles. The legal courts are separate, separate courts of appeal have been in place since 1961. Among the legal heritage from Norman law is the clamor de hero. The basis of the legal systems of both bailiwicks is Norman customary law, cotum, rather than the English common law, although elements of the latter have become established over time. Islanders are full British citizens, and therefore European citizens. Any British citizen who applies for a passport in Jersey or Guernsey receives a passport bearing the words British Islands, bailiwick of Jersey or British Islands, bailiwick of Guernsey. Under the provisions of Protocol 3, Channel Islanders who do not have a close connection with the UK, no parent or grandparent from the UK, and have never been resident in the UK for a five-year period, do not automatically benefit from the EU provisions on free movement within the EU, and their passports receive an endorsement to that effect. This affects only a minority of Islanders. Under the UK Interpretation Act 1978, the Channel Islands are deemed to be part of the British Islands, not to be confused with the British Isles. For the purposes of the British Nationality Act 1981, the British Islands include the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and Northern Ireland, the Channel Islands, and the Isle of Man, taken together, unless the context otherwise requires. Tourism is the major industry in the smaller islands, with some agriculture. However, Jersey and Guernsey have, since the 1960s, become major offshore financial centers on the scale of the Cayman Islands or Bermuda. Guernsey's horticultural and greenhouse activities have been more significant than in Jersey, and Guernsey has maintained light industry as a higher proportion of its economy than Jersey. Jersey's economy since the 1980s has been substantially more reliant on finance. Both islands are now heavily dependent on the finance industry, this along with the high cost of living has resulted in a general widening between rich and poor. Both bailiwicks issue their own banknotes and coins, which circulate freely in all the islands alongside UK coinage and Bank of England and Scottish banknotes. There are many exports, largely consisting of crafted goods and farm produce. Since 1969, Jersey and Guernsey have operated postal administrations independently of the UK's Royal Mail, with their own postage stamps, which can be used for postage only in their respective bailiwicks. UK stamps are no longer valid but mail to the islands, and to the Isle of Man, is charged at UK inland rates. It was not until the early 1990s that the islands joined the UK's postcode system, Jersey postcodes using the initials J and Guernsey G. Each of the three largest islands has a distinct vehicle registration scheme. In Sark, where most motor traffic is prohibited, the few vehicles, nearly all tractors, do not display plates. Bicycles display tax discs. In the 1960s, names used for the cross-channel ferries plying the mail route between the islands and Weymouth, Dorset, were taken from the popular Latin names for the islands, Caesarea, Jersey, Sarnia, Guernsey, and Reduna, Alderney. Fifty years later, 
The ferry route between the Channel Islands and the UK is operated by Condor Ferries from both St. Helier, Jersey, and St. Peter Port, Guernsey, using high-speed catamaran fast craft to pool in the UK. A regular passenger ferry service on the Commodore Clipper goes from both Channel Island ports to Portsmouth daily, and carries both passengers and freight. Ferry services to Normandy are operated by Manche Isles Express, and services between Jersey and Saint Malo are operated by Compagnie Corsair and Condor Ferries. The Isle of Sark Shipping Company operates small ferries to Sark. On August 20, 2013, Hewlin Renouf, which had operated a lift on lift off container service for 80 years between the port of Southampton and the port of Jersey, ceased trading. Senator Alan McLean, a Jersey politician, had previously tried to save the 90 odd jobs furnished by the company to no avail. On 20 September, it was announced that Channel Island Lines would continue this service, and would purchase the MV Hewland dispatch from Associated British Ports, who in turn had purchased them from the receiver in the bankruptcy. The new operator was to be funded by Rockane Limited, a closely held association of Jersey business people. There are three airports in the Channel Islands Alderney Airport, Guernsey Airport, and Jersey Airport which are directly connected to each other by service operated by Blue Islands and Origny. Historically there have been railway networks on Jersey, Guernsey, and Alderney, but all of the lines on Jersey and Guernsey have been closed and dismantled. Today there are three working railways in the Channel Islands, of which the Alderney Railway is the only one providing a regular timetabled passenger service. The other two are a gauge miniature railway, also on Alderney and the Heritage Steam Railway operated on Jersey as part of the Pallet Heritage Steam Museum. Regional television and radio broadcasts are available in the islands. These services are provided by BBC Radio Jersey, BBC Radio Guernsey, BBC Channel Islands, ITV Channel Television, Island FM, and Channel 103. Jubilee Hospital Radio provided Guernsey hospitals with a radio service, Radio Alliance serves Jersey hospitals. Bailiwick Radio broadcasts two music services online, through Apple and Android apps and on TuneIn. Television programs are broadcast from the Fremont Point Transmitting Station. A local television service was called Channel Islands Live started transmitting in early 2016, from the studios at Dorset Street, St. Helier, Jersey, Channel Islands. There are several local newspapers including the Guernsey Press and the Jersey Evening Post and Magazines. Jersey always operated its own telephone services independently of Britain's national system. Guernsey established its own telephone service in 1968. Both islands still form part of the British telephone numbering plan, but Ofcom on the main lines does not have responsibility for telecommunications regulatory and licensing issues on the islands. It is responsible for wireless telegraphy licensing throughout the islands, and by agreement, for broadcasting regulation on the two large islands only. Modern broadband speeds are available in all the islands, including VDSL for home and business. Providers include Shure and JT. The two bailiwicks each have their own internet domain. GG, Guernsey, Alderney, Sark, and J, Jersey, which are managed by channelislas.net. The Norman language predominated in the islands until the 19th century when increasing influence from English-speaking settlers and easier transport links led to Anglicization. There are four main dialects slash languages of Norman in the islands, Orinese, Alderney, extinct in late 20th century, Jerniseas, Guernsey, Jerez, Jersey, and Cirquies, Sark, an offshoot of Jerez. Victor Hugo spent many years in exile, first in Jersey and then in Guernsey, where he finished Les Miserables. Guernsey is the setting of Hugo's later novel, Les Travailleurs de la Mer, Toilers of the Sea. A Guernsey man also makes an appearance in Chapter 91 of Herman Melville's Moby Dick. The annual Marathi, the inter-island football match, is considered the sporting event of the year, although, due to broadcast coverage, it no longer attracts the crowds of spectators, traveling between the islands, that it did during the 20th century. Cricket is popular in the Channel Islands. The Jersey cricket team and the Guernsey cricket team are both associate members of the International Cricket Council. The teams have played each other in the interinsular match since 1957. In 2001 and 2002, the Channel Islands entered a team into the MCCA Knockout Trophy, the one day tournament of the minor counties of English and Welsh cricket. Channel Islands sportsmen and women compete in the Commonwealth Games for their respective islands, and the islands have also been enthusiastic supporters of the island games. 
Shooting is a popular sport, in which islanders have won Commonwealth medals. Guernsey's traditional color for sporting and other purposes is green and jerseys is red. The main islanders have traditional animal nicknames. Christianity was brought to the islands around the 6th century. According to tradition, Jersey was evangelized by St. Helier, Guernsey by St. Samson of Dole, and the smaller islands were occupied at various times by monastic communities representing strands of Celtic Christianity. At the Reformation, the islands turned Calvinist under the influence of an influx of French language pamphlets published in Geneva. Anglicanism was imposed in the 17th century. But the nonconformist tendency reemerged with a strong adoption of Methodism. The presence of long term Catholic communities from France and seasonal workers from Brittany and Normandy added to the mix of denominations. In the late 20th century, a strong Roman Catholic presence reemerged with the many Portuguese workers, both from mainland Portugal and the island of Madeira, coming to live in the islands, and more recently Polish Roman Catholics and other Eastern Europe worshippers. Today, more evangelical churches have been established. Services are held in a number of languages. 39% of the population are non-religious. There are other islands in the English Channel which are not part of the Channel Islands. Among these are the French islands Brea, Ile de Bats, Chosy, Tatiho and Isle saint Marcouf. The Isle of Wight, which is part of England, is between the Channel and the Solent. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.